Okay, as authorized by Section 55, oh, sorry. This is the Media Community Investment Program Task Force for Monday, May 15, 2023. As authorized by Section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code, this meeting may be convened into a closed session for the purpose of seeking confidential legal advice from the City Attorney on any agenda item herein. The City of Rowlett reserves the right to reconvene, recess, or realign the regular session or call executive session or order of business at any time prior to adjournment. The process for public input, if you're not able to attend in person, you may complete the citizen input form on the city's website by 3.30 p.m. the day of the meeting. All forms will be forwarded to the task force prior to the start of the meeting. For in-person comments, registration forms, instructions are available at the city hall. So did you receive any citizen input? Or yeah. Okay, very good. All right then. Um, so our first agenda item is to consider approval of the minutes for the March 23rd, 2023 meeting. Okay, I'd like to... Okay, please. Point of order. Oh, please. That should be April 7th. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. March 23rd. March 23rd. I'm not sure if all specimens. No, I understand. Yeah. So consider approval of the minutes from the April 17th, 2023 meeting. I, I do have a <coughs> correction. Okay. Well, <coughs> I don't know the answer to the correction. Um, but we we could not tell who motioned <coughs> to approve those minutes and who seconded it. Uh, we're talking about the approval of the minutes, item number one. Okay, we recorded that John Cote motioned and seconded, and I <laughs> don't know that that's correct, but we couldn't tell. I motion. I would recall. I motion to approve with corrections. Correct. Yeah, we can. We can. We can motion that way, but do we need to? So correct the motion. For so we can correct the minutes, but I don't know who seconded. The motion. So keep in mind that boarding commissions are not by state law obligated to uh, perform under the Texas Open Meetings Act. So it's, if this was a council meeting or a PNC meeting, this would be something we would definitely have to correct. It's not necessarily critical to correct at this level. We can assume, as noted, as was saying, that noted that there's, uh, that there's still, yeah, a second, there was a motion was correct and we don't have we just move it as part of the motion today. Okay. So let's make that amendment. One other amendment. The date listed there is March twenty third, June March twenty seventh. If you would please yes. identify who has motioned and who has seconded. John Coe, who we can make the motion to approve the minutes as amended with the amended dates and corrections on the second motion. And Jeff Sheldon has seconded the motion. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay. Motion passes. Um, I'm going to go off agenda agenda just for a moment. Um, I want to thank the task force members who served for the last bond cycle. Um, I, I think it was the success of getting the bonds passed was in no small part due to the efforts that you guys made in getting out there and getting the word out and braving the heat thunderstorm. So thank you very much. And, Job of so thank you. Um, next item discuss and review potential park projects for the 2024 bond election. That's me. All right. I guess I 
thank y'all for allowing me to be here. Um, we're going to go through the projects that we're kind of requesting. Um, we gathered as much information as we could. If there's not any answers that I can provide, I definitely will get you answers as soon as possible. Um, a lot of things are happening. Parks and Recreation, we're excited. Um, so it couldn't be you know, right the time to start kicking off this stuff. So. Here's a list of all of the potential CIP bond projects that we have um, talked about. We'll go through each one in a few minutes. It's kind of a little bit of a longer uh, slideshow, but I'll get more in depth as we uh, proceed. So uh, parks maintenance improvements, and that mainly is where our park staff operates from. Uh, if you haven't been out to community park, I, I would recommend that you possibly go out that way. Uh, wet zone, again, 22-year-old facility that needs continued love. Uh, truck construction, erosion control, uh, Lakefront Congrove Phase 2, which we'll get into in a little bit as well. Uh, parking lot improvements, straight blue bonnet, uh, additional kayak docks and launches at specified places. Uh, Scenic Point Park Phase 3. Uh, we were looking at possibly doing some gym A improvements, which is the lower gym at the community center, uh, which is the older gym and the original gym uh, that was in place when they it, or renovated, if you will. Uh, there are a lot of identified uh, concerns with it. Uh, community Park Athletic Field improvement. Uh, we'll talk about Kids Kingdom and some renovations and some repairs that are really needed to be done. Uh, Shorewood Park, we have been to Shorewood Park, it's off of Wood Lake, uh, and Dow Rock, and then we'll talk about the additional lead to RCC. So to kick it off, uh, park maintenance improvements. Uh, we're asking for $2 million. Uh, what you'll see is the pictures uh, on the right-hand side are basically where the parks guys uh, operate from. They are, there are 18 full-time staff uh, that operate from here, work from here uh, intermittently, as you will. Some of the most recent updates that we've done is we've expanded the yard to accommodate the equipment vehicles. So if you look at the, I guess it'd be the bottom middle picture, um, that was probably not even half the size of the yard when uh, they expanded it. So if you can imagine all of the equipment bundled in one place on top of each other, it was hard for the guys to get to move in and out, park trucks, but now that we've uh, expanded the yard, it's allowed them a little bit more room to kind of maneuver, load up uh, their trailers, uh, do what they need to do, so on and so forth. Uh, they had a Connex boxes. So the Connex boxes are basically assigned to each crew. So there are four crews. Uh, each crew has designated weed eaters, uh, generators, <coughs> everything that they need on their day-to-day -day operations. So uh, they stock those when it's needed. Uh, they also added, so it, the bottom right picture were, she was there, but the bottom right picture, when it would rain really hard, that would flood. Water would rush through there, um, ruin drywall, ruin some of the equipment. So we had to add a French drain to help try to alleviate some of that rainfall, um, which has helped, but the water still gets in. Um, if we are given the, or provided the, uh, this amount of dollars, we'll start as soon as possible. Uh, what I did for this project was break it down into two options. So I did a million dollar budget, which basically gives us a 5,000 square foot facility, which will provide showers, men's and women's restrooms, a break room and office space. Right now they are currently utilizing one restroom. I do have three females that work for the park recreation um, The office space is what you see in the first picture on the bottom left, which basically isn't much room for anybody, um, as well as a great room. So by, by just doing the building itself, we'll give them a little bit more room. Right now, they're currently taking lunches in the trucks. Um, they're finding places to sit outside just because it gets so crowded in the town. 
Um, second option is actually the $2 million option, which is all of the $1 million, if you will, plus storage and equipment washing station, which helps the guys when they have to clean off mowers, when they have to clean up you know, concrete, things of that nature. And then in addition to lighting and security cameras, currently there are, I mean, there's no lighting at the facility and no cameras. So that will be included to uh, you know, oversee that whole entire facility. So it's kind of difficult for the guys to continue to be peppy, if you will, when we come to work. Um, so if you can imagine trying to work from your closet, that's what these guys are doing. So. Mm -hmm. Woodzone Water Park, $1.5 million. As you guys know, Aaron, yes, sir. Excuse me for a moment. Yes, sir. Um, everything that you, you're speaking about with regard to the municipal building, uh, the parks building, mm -hmm. and its maintenance, is uh, it's what you're considering here uh, for how far in the future and with regard to how much additional equipment beyond what you're using today. So not so much equipment, it's more of a space. Space so for personnel. It's for personnel, yes. So if you look at the top right hand corner, the, the comics <coughs> box on the left is where their break room and their offices are, which are the two pictures in the top right and left. Okay. And then the bottom right picture is basically <coughs> where storage and stuff is. So but I don't ask just to meet what we need today, but what we need five or ten years right now. Exactly. Well, I was thinking that that might be uh, a consideration here. We toured this on, on the ad hoc one previously, and, and <coughs> I, I agree with that, Jeff, to look to the future, but. Even even to meet today's needs, it's inadequate. It, it is sure. almost talking. I didn't mean to question that. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> In the last bond review, we had four million dollar price made on this versus the two. Do you know what the difference is in the upgrades were? So, some of it came with the expansion. Um, so it would have been the fencing. It would have been the additional material that they needed to grow the yard. Uh, the conex boxes. Um, so. We, we tried to find funding for that. We did the best that we could for the guys. Um, and what we came up with is what's there now. So um, $4 million facility would be awesome, but I mean, realistically, um, with what they're operating in now, it would be so much more advanced and just give them the opportunity to function the way they need to function. So, does that answer your question? Real quick, for the ignorant folk in the room. Yes, sir. Where are you located? So, Community Park, it's off of Andrews Lane. It's that's out where, in that's where your quote unquote facility yes. is. Okay. That's where the parks operations facility is. It used to be, it originally, originally, it was an industrial, so it was at the corner of industrial sort of and PGBT. Then we moved to public works. <laughs> The public works started to grow, so then we had to move to uh, community park. It's between the all the yes. 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 So, so what? So, but here, far from the house. Yeah, it, it's a way. So, really, the showers are for anybody who's spraying um, or anybody who's dragging ball fields. If you can imagine the middle of summer, it's dry as a bone, all that dirt and dust is whipping around and trying to get your truck. Oh, yeah, I'm not saying it's not. Deep. Yeah, I'm just <coughs> kind of surprised that you're such a important. Just for clarification, can we assume that you're presenting this in order of your priority? This is top priority, next priority, and so forth, or, or should we not assume that? That's correct. No, that is the assumption that your assumption is correct. So this is top to bottom, this, this is our priorities. Uh, you know, I have uh, I have an assistant director, we, we spoke about this numerous times. Um, 
and we, we agree on the order. So you'll see, so from this order to how we present is basically one through whatever it is. So, so, you it, Jeff? so <laughs> that was seven slides more. I do have, so when we, when you, when the yard was expanded, do you think that's about the amount of space that you'll need for storage and stuff going forward, the, the physical yard space, not the building? As far as, as far as physical, I mean, we, we can always use more space. Right, right. But if, if I had to choose between the two, I, the building would be extremely nice. The way they have this set up, and, and all of the staff have input, that's important to me to make sure that they're set up in, in the way that they function. Yeah, so just to kind of give you direction on where I was going. So if we look at, at future expansion of the yard, it would be nice, it is in the middle of community park, if as part of this there could be some landscaping or shielding or stuff um, yes. to make it look more like it's part of the park instead of yeah, this is a maintenance facility. Yes, yeah, it's more like an expeditionary park service. Versus, uh, yeah. Yeah. You, you have to keep those open. You have to keep those open. Ah. Okay. So, so yes, sir. Potentially, absolutely. Yes. But, you know, you, you go to some of these other, you know, larger parks and you see their park maintenance buildings and, you know, they have, you know, the trees and they have bushes and it doesn't necessarily look like a facility yard, um, but it is a facility. So, I, yeah, I would just say that if we can, if, if that's included in part of this or conversation in the vision for it, that's fine, but it might be something we want to consider sure. if it's not. And I really don't <laughs> care what the dump side looks like, but the right. street side, maybe. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. 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 Don't care about seals. No. <laughs> 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 So, well, Wet Zone Water Park, uh, again, as you guys know, it's a 22-year-old facility, so anything that old, it really needs love. Um, last year, we entertained 28,000 visitors through the park, uh, which is outstanding. Down a little bit from uh, pre-COVID, if you will, but we're getting back to where we needed to be, so that was definitely a, a, a stepping stone for, for that. Uh, we had 442 rentals. That's rentals as in birthday parties, that's in private rentals. Um, everything throughout the day where people actually can, can reserve cabanas, birthday party pavilions, after hours. So after hours is definitely important. So you gotta think about all the constant running of everything. Features, pumps, all of it. So just keep that in consideration. So what we're asking for is one of the things is we have paid for the facility. Uh, again, 20 years old. I think it's time that we update just a little bit. Um, the interior of the uh, guest gift shop, as well as the concession stand, has been updated. Um, we're trying to keep up with the 2000s, if you will. Um, this is great. Um, everything's fantastic in what they did. But we're trying to update, but keep the theme as to as we move forward. So everything is fresh, and everything is keeping everyone coming back. Uh, new features in Turtle Cove. So the original feature is 2001. If you look in the top right-hand corner, that is the original feature, um, which has had some love over the last few years. So we painted a few times, um, replaced a few times. So we need to look at updating that. Uh, new shape structures. The Tiki Huts at the bottom right hand corner is some of the old Tiki Huts that we've had through sun exposure and wind and the elements of the great Texas heat. Um, it takes a toll. So we're looking at wanting to replace that. If you haven't been to a wet zone, uh, wet zone currently has a sand volleyball court. Um, over the last few years, it has been utilized to the best of its ability. So what we're proposing is to eliminate the pavilion, I mean, excuse me, eliminate the sand volleyball court and install a pavilion. With the pavilion, we can use the pavilion all year round, just like we do with the common road port. So it would, be, it would mean that it would give us more sustainability and give us more revenue options for the park. If you didn't know, wet zone is 100% sustainable, which means if they spend $100,000, they have to make $100,000. Now they make it. 
So uh, that would just give us more options to uh, bring in more revenue for that. What we can do is to kind of give you guys an idea. If you look on the north side of Wet Zone, Congrove Park has a pavilion. So you have Kids Kingdom, then you have Wet Zone. In, in between that is a larger pavilion that we rent, but we have uh, movable fence, if you will, where we can block it off and then divide it up for Wet Zone. And all of that revenue that is made through those facility reservations goes back to Wet Zone. At the end of the season, that fence is transformed back to the Congrove Park, and then we can rent separately. Our idea is to do kind of the same thing on the south side, because now that we have this golf course, we can do more events out there. So if we want to have tournaments, we can rent. We want to have more opportunities for people to do birthday parties, it's there as well. So it's an additional source of revenue generating income that we can provide to the public. Do you need, do you need to do anything special with the new fencing to do that now? So we've pre-planned. So that section, regardless if this is passed or not, this whole section right here will be movable, if you will. Um, again, with a large water park like this, pumps are an efficient part of the factory. Um, some of the pumps that we have need to be fixed, they need to be replaced, they need to be you know, re-inspected. So the, the exterior pumps that we have, we have two pump rooms. We have an exterior pump and we have an interior pump room. Most of the exterior pumps that are outside obviously bring the heat and the inlets more than the ones inside. The ones inside bring it more because of the acid and, and chlorine and water and everything else. So you have rust, you have other factors that are you know, coming into play. So all of those need to be evaluated. Some of the plumbing and chemical controls need to be looked at, uh, updated. You know, these are, these are five, six, seven year old pumps, controllers, things of that sort that are exposed to, again, chlorine, acid, water, heat. So we would have to have everything evaluated uh, prior to those being repaired. And then lastly, as I, I tried to explain it, was the wind-driven turbine exhaust. So it's the thing that's on top of the roof that spins. Uh, we don't have that. So we would need to update that, replace that, um, and then also look at replacing some of the ventilation system that's inside this pump. So my first question on this is on the pump room renovation. <clears throat> I'm not saying it's not needed, but if it was a complete replacement, I can see it being a capital project, but the way it's kind of listed there, it almost seems more maintenance. Possibly, yes. Okay. It, it's going to, I'm sorry, are, the, are these the original pumps? <clears throat> the Some of them are the original pumps. Um, Some of them just do require maintenance. A lot of the inspections change. So the requirements change through the state, uh, so they would just need to be updated. So ultimately, it could be it could be maintenance. Yes. I mean, the ventilation system. I understand that is completely new or replacing <laughs> the, the, the cost of it, whether it becomes capital. But some of the other things, I don't know if you can bond on it it's if it's maintenance or not the scope. <clears throat> I don't work too many pumps. That, well, I mean, I've worked on pumps that are four years old, but we. No. Yeah, the, the, <clears throat> the question is whether any of these improvements will serve the term of the bond. Um, and so if a pump is, is designed to last for 20 years, then I think that's something you could bond for sure. Correct. But if it's a, a lifespan of less than 20 years, then that's where you have to really question whether this should be something that goes into our maintenance operations budget rather than you know, bonding it out. Yeah, this sounds like a lot of like Rhode Island. Well, and, and I, I'm sorry if I missed it. it how, what is the lifespan of these pumps? It's 15 to 20 years. So, every, so it's an actual pump, but everything inside the pump has, just like a car. So you buy a car, yeah. everything, everything functions. <clears throat> so filters and, yes, things, things of that sort. So if you replace the entire pump, lifespan of the pump is 15 to 20 years. And how much is that pump? One pump, how much? Uh, I would have to check on that for you. It was kind of a 
precursor to my question. So you've got one, two, three, four, five different kind of major work points here in the, in the general number. Uh, I'd kind of like to see as we go through, because each of those are a deliverable. Uh, that makes a capital project if indeed it meets the definition of a capital project. But right now, saying wet zone one and a half million dollars is kind of generic. I'd like to see at project level what is to be delivered. So the question comes during the bond auction. What am I going to get? You can say, getting this for this much, this for this much, and this for this much. And, and kind of the same thing back to new paint for the facility. If it's a mural or something, you might be able to do it as a work of art or something, but if we're just talking about paint, that, that's maintenance. As long as it's a conversation three years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we definitely don't want to uh, finance paint for 20 years. Right. Um, and then one other question in general, and, and it's going to make me sound anti wet zone, and I'm not. I like the wet zone. Took my kids there, and they great that the city has its, its own water park. Um, but have we looked at when Sapphire Bay is completed? What we what impact the attendance that might have on the attendance numbers of the wet zone? So, so we've had those conversations um, internally. We've had those conversations. We don't feel that Sapphire Bay is going to have that much of an impact because we are you know, so family friendly. Uh, we, we do feel that there will be some sort of impact. Um, staff has already talked about strategies about how they can continue to recruit and open up and market the wet zone. Uh, we have we have competition all over the place. I mean you have Point Falls, uh, Splash Kingdom, you know, you have you know Waterview Water Park. So uh, uh, with the here and I don't mean to interrupt, I'm sorry. You know, one of the things that makes the wet zone so appealing for Raleigh residents is it's convenient. It's here. Right. Um, and it's cheap. You know, it's cheap. When Sapphire Bay is done, should you braid to go to the south point of town after it's done? Yeah. It's still if you if you're you kind of you kind of got that same convenience factor <coughs> that you would have. You know, I know that they can go to Hawaii Falls and other water parks. Um, so, uh, two very different concepts. I hear what you're saying, but they're two very different concepts. <coughs> the Sapphire Bay swimming area is part of the hotel, and so it, it would be you know you have to I guess get. Uh, probably, I don't know the framework of how they're going to do it yet, but my understanding is that it was either going to be a part of you had to be a hotel guest or um, get a special pass. <coughs> either way, for sure, the cost will be more at Sapphire Bay than here. Um, this is, yeah, that's right. I mean, it, this is it's, it's too, it's quite different from each other. Um, so you know, you're here for just the water park, you're there for everything else and the water park. Right. Um, and it's not, I don't think their water park is going to be as um, amenitized as this water park in terms of the features uh, for the kids. It's really all that they've designed is a large lazy river and then a couple of splash pads. Right. Well, and this, that's the surf. That's not for recreation. That's not for your kids going swimming. Right, exactly. So, so I, I guess the only question I have is, is, you know, if we put more money into wet zone, we're paying for this for 20 years, and if we see attendance numbers impacted severely, or it becomes we go start to go more into the red for it, we're still going to be paying for it in 20 years, whether we decide to, to stay in the water park business or not. So I, I tell you, uh, I think it was during the recession, the way recession, didn't we sell off some features in order to make money? Um, isn't that? I don't remember. My understanding is that we sold a slide and another feature uh, in the early part of the OA recession, and we made money off it. I mean, I'm, if so, the reason I'm saying that is if we do see significant reduction in usage, um, that could be an option uh, for a future council, because you basically sell off all of the features and then close it. I mean, if if that happens, I don't think it will. But. All right. I, I don't. Thank you. For that. I, I don't think it will. Um, our biggest uh, revenue generator is Groupon. Uh, so we use Groupon a lot, and 
I think it, this could serve as possibly an advantage for those that, if they do stay at Sapphire Bay, they don't want to go, they want to come to a white park. They're not driving to Six Flags, they're not driving to Prairie um, Lodge. So, you know, by, by updating by updating Turtle Cove and by adding additional shade, that's one thing we hear is, I don't have enough shade. So we're trying to slowly implement more shades, slowly implement more seating options, slowly implement more more options for people who want to bring their families because and I'll tell you what, it gets hot out there. And I, I, I've been out there with my family and it's like, oh, man. and I just sit and I listen to what everybody's saying and kind of have to you know, make sure I don't put my, my work hat on and, and just listen and, and comprehend and, and just evaluate what I hear from people every day. That's really what it comes down to. If I may, one question. Is uh, any of this building in accommodation for additional guests over and above what you're experiencing now? That is to say, uh, are we allowing for more people to come and visit and therefore maybe generate more income? I think by changing out the volleyball court to a pavilion, it possibly that could. Would be that. That's it's another added right. amenity. Um, you know, I, I think by continuing to look at our operations and what we're providing to, you know, the park, vi park visitors um, is definitely another option as well. Um, but I think as far as continuing to make sure we're updating and we're staying within line of the 2000s and not the 1990s, um, we'll continue to draw in, you know, private parties and, and we get daycares are a big user of the facility. Um, but even throughout the summer, it, it's it's famous. So it's definitely definitely a place that people enjoy coming to. So it, it's my job to make sure that I continue to provide those opportunities for these families. So. Well, the new disc golf course too. I think it, they complement each other. Because mm -hmm. um, if I go out and play around, it would certainly be nice to come back and jump in the pool. So. Um, I have a question. I've I've never actually been to Windsor. Uh, is the Windsor um, uh, I believe it is, yes. Should be. It, it's ADA. I mean, it has to pass the night for a few years. And then, just out of curiosity, <clears throat> for all your pumps and that, are any of those redundant systems or is it a simple failure? I can find that out for you because I don't know the answer to that question. What was it? I'm sorry. We want to know if there's redu any redundancy in pumping. Systems that he has, or is it simple no, that, or that, that shut down? So the pump goes out. Is that apparatus uh, feature yeah, out? Sure, that's pump goes out. One goes out. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, that's pump goes out. Other freight gets a pump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one and done. Yeah. How long have the what, your, what is the okay? How old is the oldest pump there? You oh, know that? No, I do not. Did you know that? Okay. But they're all starting to get. That's this is just curious how old the oldest pump is because I know some of our lift station pumps and I know how old some of those are. They've been running since the whole uh, since uh, <laughs> like the eighties or something. But some of those, I mean, some of those, I mean, absolutely could be twenty years old. Yeah. And it's time to replace them. But I, I currently write the second do not demand. Does it cost anything to have the pumps evaluated? life cycle of it or if it's one year away, ten years away. So we, we contract with the company who comes out, yeah. they'll inspect it. Right. And if there's nothing wrong with it, then it's you know, charge. But they come out and they inspect it and they say, oh, you need to replace these, you need to replace these, then obviously we need to replace those. And one other question, is the wet zone net revenue profit or is it it breaks just the parks? Budget right. overall is it amenity? What last year it profited? But last year it did profit. Um, COVID we struggled. We did obviously did, not but last year we made close to eighty-four thousand dollars in profit. It's over twenty years old, right? So the original pumps are paid off at this point. Well, what we do is we take that profit and put it back into the park. Park <coughs> now. This past year was paying out the events. Yeah. Yes. Well, the twenty fifteen bond I added a slide and took down the bond. So that was a major one. Yes. 
So it helps with the physics. And then I think the charge is that it needs to recover 100% of its operating cost. That's correct. Uh, and nothing in there for maintenance type, you know, every five years we need to paint the facility. Some of it does come out of operations, yes, it does. So she'll, she may start off the year in a negative balance, but she can make it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I just wanted to say conceptually, the wet zone together with Kids Kingdom. Raleigh Community Center is a concentration of major recreational facilities in the city, which the city has provided to the citizens uh, with the intent that they, they benefit from this, whether it's grandkids, teenagers, adults, grandparents. It's a more open and welcoming uh, facility in the city that's that we provide to them. Uh, the pump room question with regard to its maintenance and need to be, whether it needs to be replaced in the age of the pumps is a critical element of the wet zone. Uh, the pump goes down, then the circulation of the water is halts in effect. Uh, so whether or not uh, we go forward and choose to that as part of the bond or becomes a council question with regard to maintenance. Um, I think it probably benefits <coughs> maintenance because it maintains the facility for its 100% operation. Okay. That's just my thought on with regard to both, you know, the concentration of the wet zone, the Kids Kingdom, and the Recreation Center, two blocks from Herford. So we, Again, you, you've got a possibility of this cross-fertilization, and uh, I would hate to see any compromise made with regard to the wet zone because of, because of those features. Don't forget the uh, Congress of Parks and all that at the end of the street summer. Correct. Right. So I, my observation being out there is we're, not, we're drawing not just around that people, we're drawing people from outside around that into that area, especially. Opportunity for us to satisfy the residents' needs, but also in terms of doing things like permanence with Frisbee Hall. Kind of having refreshment plans out there more generally outside of what's going to be doing in the future with the kids' community. What plans? Some kind of a beverage service or something, snack bar kind of thing out there. Kids' kingdom. So those kind of things. The ice cream truck comes by and it is. It comes by all the time. We can make a lot of money. Yeah, there's another aspect to this is that um, these facilities are attractive not only to the citizens of all of people. I see all the non coming into the recreation center that are not citizens of all of and they have to pay extra or participate there with the basketball or some of the other programs that are available. And there's also a cross fertilization possible here for the wet zone. There are Folks that find this attractive without having to go to Hawaiian Falls, so, which is a considerable distance from a lot of Anyway. Well, this falls already bringing in a lot of traffic even before it was done. It's not even open yet. There's my plan. And I'm like, what are y'all doing? You can't be playing with it. <laughs> they don't care. I've played three rounds already, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no diagram to show the layout, but it's like, okay, we can figure it out. I need to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I already lost this now. So, track construction. Uh, as you guys know, it's been a big topic here. In We're asking for $3 million. Uh, right now, the Garner Football is trail is a 90% design, uh, which we're excited about. Hopefully, we'll start within the next month or two. Uh, what I tried to do is provide everyone kind of some visuals of how long these trails are going to be as far as where they're at throughout the city. Uh, once we finish going for the wall, uh, Shreddy Road is, is next, which is just under a, a mile, which will then hook to Lake Highlands Trail, uh, which is finished recently. Uh, so that will be nice. 
currently have $590,000 remaining in that fund. Um, and then other trust we, we want to look at doing is Main Street East, which is basically along Main Street from PGBT Service Road down to what's going to be Lake Franklin Cone Grove. Um, so that will hook up Lake Franklin Cone Grove to Rutherford Road, basically, once it's done. Um, Long Branch, 5,000 square foot, linear feet, if you will, sorry. Um, and then Rowlett Road, which is about a half a mile. Uh, I, didn't, I did not bring the master plan just because I only had one copy and figured everybody wanted to pass around. But it is available on the website if you want to check it out. Um, the remaining trails are on the right. That's what council approved. We are in the process of updating our parks and trails master plan. Subcommittee. Um, some of those images that um, are currently in the master plan will be updated. Um, we are still adhering to the no trails behind the, the homes and the lake, so we're changing things up just a tad. Uh, so you see Main Street East, Long Branch Trail, uh, Rallet Road, Village Trail, uh, the Signature Gateway Trail, Bunny oh. Creek Trail, which everybody knows. Uh, I joked one time I was giving a tour <coughs> to the, the Citizens Academy and I told them that it was going to be a mud bog. So everybody knows what a mud bog is and they were excited and I was like, oh, that's not good. I'm just joking. Uh, so, and then the Rally Paddle Trail, which is uh, recognized by Texas Parks and Wildlife, if you guys don't know. So that's more of the kayak. You drop off at out of one park, you can row up to the north and then row back down and then. Quick question on the, the Shrady Road Trail. Um, what happens to be up there? Is there what are the? And I know it was brought brought up briefly at our at our road one. It, is there any plans to widen Shrady in the near future? And, and the only reason I bring that up, not because of that, but I agree a trail needs to be there. But can we put it where it would be like outside? The easement, well, so we don't so put it in the tariff. We did include Shrady on one of the proposed street projects okay. for the next one. But um, I don't believe that the master thoroughfare plan calls for that to actually be widened in the sense that it, it's going to stay a two lane. And I, I'd have to check the master thoroughfare plan. Um, I don't even think it's divided. No, I think it's it's a two two lane. Lane. Like right. Right. But here's the deal: it will include sidewalks, and yes. so yes. if Sources. if this group decides to recommend Shrady Road uh, reconstruction, then therefore uh, the scope for the trail construction would not include Shrady Road because that will be already included in uh, the construction. But we would have to make it as a trail and not just a sidewalk. The trail is, is wider. I like her to change it. No, we'll just, no. We'll change it. We'll change it. We have it. We don't need to go complicated. No. The sidewalk's a sidewalk. No, they need to be wider in general. I mean, throughout the city. Yeah, you know, all the kids walking that road. Or riding, so the road riding bikes. Trail. But that can be as part of the construction <laughs> right. for straight road. That yeah. does not need to be separate from. No, exactly. Right. But, but what I don't want to see. If, 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 if they're going regular sidewalk width on one side, and I would say uh, they can't right. on, on the other side. For with the trail. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you might have lost your extension. Correct. But that could be included in the construction road. process. Yes, it yeah. could. Absolutely. Right. 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 Somebody might have a signal. Yeah. My baseball guys are getting a signal. Um, roast control. I'm asking for $3 million. As you guys know, roast control has become a huge issue along a lot of our uh, lakeside parks. Uh, Sandy Point Park, for one, uh, which is the top right hand picture uh, that will show you the red areas, which is where we really need to have uh, you know, origin taken taken care of. Uh, Lakeside Park South, which is the left picture with a little bit of green in it. That little bit of green is the most recent uh, erosion that's been done. If, if you remember, they have installed the pier as well. So 
um, that's the second part, and then the third part is Padawan Park, which is the bottom right picture on the right that takes you from basically shoreline all the way down to where they uh, almost go the road. So um, those are some of the, the areas that we're really looking at getting done. Um, there are future plans to hopefully try to install kayak launches in a few of these areas, if you will, um, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. But again, anything we have to do along the, the lakeshore has to be approved by the city of Dallas. Um, I talk with our contact uh, from the city of Dallas quite frequently you know, on a lot of this stuff just to make sure we're kind of on the same page. So. What type of road control system are you talking about? Specifically, um, quay wall or brick rack. So, so there's probably going to be a, a couple spots we'll do the prep. Um, I don't specifically know seawalls. Probably the scenic point park might be more of a seawall. Um, but, but as far as Lakeside South goes, on the northern part of uh, Lakeside, it's not that bad. So they would probably have to, I'm not an erosion expert by any means, um, but what they probably would have to come in and do is do some sort of rip wrap. A lot of people are now fishing there. Um, so they're coming over from Patapon Park and going to fish on the side south. Um, so anything that we can put there, that will comment and some will help. So that will be a conversation that we have with, uh, whether it's some sort of designer, some sort of engineer, to help us determine what's going to be best suitable for those locations. So is the three million just for engineering services, or so it's basically if you, to, to put it bluntly, it's a million dollars per um, location. Location, roughly, you're looking at about fifty thousand, sixty thousand dollars in design. Um, I can't specifically say that, um, but that's well, that's how it's looking. Depending on what you're going to do, so it's right. your cost. And right. So that's why I'm trying to figure out what's the three million worth. So sorry. the south part, I'm sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I just yell. Is it safe to assume that the Dallas uh, will not participate in financially in doing this? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Even though they own the money. Right. So their thought process is. Know. One, we sub these, just as an example, even if it's not take area, until it's not a point where it absolutely, absolutely cannot be done any other way, they might come in and see if there's an alternative, but they're pretty hands off. We've had issues with other areas, and they pretty much are going to worry about it. Um, the south part of uh, Lake Point South, below the, below the green there, that was Cage River, I believe, that was at Seawall. <coughs> Do you remember when they did that? Where? No, you mean at uh, Lakeside mean? Park? Yeah. I don't think, no, I don't think okay. that it was. Right. Seawall. Yeah, I don't think. There's a seawall where. So you're talking about the green. No. So that's where the seawall is. Okay. And it comes down just past that last parking lot and then it stops. Okay. So right there where it stops. Yeah, where, yes. So from, from where the green where the green stops to where the red picks up. Because that's that's when we focused when I started here in 2011. Right. I remember about a year or so later that's where they had started doing a lot of work. Okay. But I thought along some of that area already they had done some erosion control other than where the green is. So like where the fishing pier is and stuff. Did they not wasn't there something in the I don't I don't believe I don't or? believe so. I don't okay. believe so. Okay. All right. I can verify that, but I don't I don't believe so. Yeah, I don't want to bury it in the minutiae. I got to go through tonight. So I want to see how with the map is just the very section, everything else was on radio show. Actually, we have more than three million dollars worth of erosion control that needs to be done. So, I'm being very specific. 
again, what we're going to do, we're going to solve this problem here. This is the political. We're solving this problem here. It's going to be very quick. Okay, this hurt, especially after the pandemic. I'm not this year. I can still eight million dollars here. I'm going to come back next year. I can still have 15. They're going to want to know what's being hired. That's going to allow for the three years or three years. I think people like seeing this is your bond project at work signs around and stuff. Oh yeah, we, we don't do that. We need to do that. Well, on a quarterly basis, I like when you say we have a starting point on the, uh, the parks maintenance area. So we'll start here. Okay, let's get out to see. So where am I starting? This is our expected duration. And then we work to that in the course of the next several years. That's how we build confidence what do you mean by erosion control methods? What, what has to be approved by the city now? Is that the actual material or how is it distributed? <coughs> well, there, there are some materials that are prohibited. I, I don't recall offhand what they are. They have an approved list of seawall materials. Um, as far as other types of erosion control, like riprap or gabion gauge riprap, um, they're they're open to that. Um, there are other types of erosion methods. I don't know how Dallas feels about them, such as um, concrete mats, um, things of that nature. Um, so uh, Dallas has. A say in in what construction projects we do in along their shoreline. So I think also Jeff can give me some part but they are also more amenable to alternatives now than they were before. Sure. So I think we do have an opportunity if we can prove up why a design should be the means and methods are up for for discussion now than what they used to be before. Well, I would think that the approvals of the material and how we do that. So we just right. ask them for $3 million, and if they would approve a higher cost, we would have to back off on the, the feet that we were pretty more. Right. 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 Your scope would have to change that, Yeah. Right. 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 So, <coughs> so we're not really going to Dallas and saying for this area, at least three areas, that we're going to be a target. Well, I think what, what would happen, I think what would happen is that we would hire a consultant to do the design, and what they come up with, it, given the budget, what they come up with, then we would have to go to Dallas for the approval. I would think, too, based on what the general use is for that section of the lakefront, too, is going to determine the material as well. Because somebody put brought up fishing, you know, if we're using riprap and somebody's walking down the riprap and breaks the leg or yeah. twists an ankle or in, in you know, Paddler's Point, you don't want a seawall with a four foot drop where there's kids and kayakers around there too. So, you know, I think that needs to be considered as well when we're looking at what we're going to do. Well, I think to Brian's point on the specifics, if we're going to put this up for money to the citizens and we're going to say these are the areas marked that we're going to deliver on they approve the three men, and then we go to the city and find out, oops, with the material cost, we're really only going to do two of the three men. So I just think it's, again, transparency with maybe a little more upfront details to the project cost. We can get that. Or even maybe just very I mean, rough possible designs. I know until you yeah. have a consultant yeah. come in, that you really can't do that. Yeah. I'm afraid, afraid now you're you mentioned you know three million a million for each area. Well, one area is three hundred forty six hundred feet versus two hundred two thousand eight six hundred. So you know right. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to say that. We were talking or you know, the other day too about the potential for going something other than a hardscape. Uh, I was just trying to find some uh, information on what we might consider looking at natural uh, plantings that actually stop erosion as well. Uh, it, probably something we would need some expert assistance on figuring out what to do. Probably 
remember what that grass was called? I, I found another place on the alpha called Swan Plants. Um, a bunch of different potential. Uh, for 26, I think you need the bed to actually see it and see if it's really effective or not. Is it just vegetation or is there a combination of some man made I, 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 I don't know if really answer the question. It's a, it's, it's a combo, and what it does is it also builds its own ecosystem along that shoreline. So those have been used in different um, areas where you have the reeds and what have you to retain, but you've got trees that have specific root systems that also then prevent the erosion, which builds that ecosystem along the shoreline the as well. The reeds block the way out Correct. the Correct. Of the so it's, it's, a, it's an the aggregate. Hold, Correct. Hold the dirt in place. Correct. It's all kind of system, system yes. process. It's very, very equal friendly. And, 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 and cost efficient. In the long run, absolutely, you know, make them cost. Of course, maybe hard to fish through the reeds. <laughs> <laughs> It'll keep people from swimming later, so. Well, what it'll attract more competition to do other people to swim. That's what I'm thinking. 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 That's Okay, so Lakefront Con Grove Phase 2, um, we, we've, to be honest with everybody, we've had to go back to the drawing board just a little bit on this project. Um, the reason is, is because when we originally built this, bid this project, we came in and doubled what we had. So obviously we didn't have the money to do what we wanted to do. Um, so we had to go back basically to the drawing board. Um, what Phase 1 and what the, what the landscape architect is working on now is refining re and refreshing the bid documents. So what phase one is going to look like, what, what we have is the circle drop. So let me try this again. There it is. So this is the circle drop, is what I call it, uh, which will allow someone to come in, pull up to the front, unload their kayak, go park, and then load their kayak onto either the kayak launch or the job boat launch. What we're trying to do is replicate a uh, pool park, just to be honest. Um, originally, we had said we wanted to do some different things, uh, but with the scope of what we had, it wasn't feasible. So what you're getting in phase one is the circle drop, which I just showed you, a few parking spaces, the kayak launch, and the job boat launch, because we only have $330,000. Concrete work takes up a lot of it. Um, we, we've cussed and discussed a lot of stuff um, amongst staff, back and forth, back and forth. It's kind of like playing tennis. Um, and then finally it was, let's, let's figure this out and let's do it. So um, what phase two will allow us to do is add additional features that were originally scheduled in phase one. So um, phase two will be additional parking spaces, which will be this. There it is, which will be this area right in here, through here, which will really open up parking. Um, what's unique about this park is a wayfinding device. So it's a 20 foot, if you will, a concrete totem uh, with a flashing beacon on top that if anybody unloads a paddle pump park, can kayak over to the front of Con Grove. It's kind of a wayfinding device, if you will. Um, which then will tie into the, the Powder Loop Trail at some point. Um, additional parking lot lighting, which we've already got quotes on, $75,000. I broke it up the best I could for you. Um, trails, whether it's a crushed granite trail, whether it's something that will get us around this area to begin with here. Um, picnic shelters with tables and grills, which would be these right here and through here, which will give us additional revenue opportunities for those that want to rent it. Now, just be probably 15 by 15 with crushed granite, picnic tables underneath it that you can rent. Uh, be nice on a cool spring or fall day. How would you control that? Yeah, that's we, we actually have, so we would do it just like we do in any other park. Uh, we have park staff work seven days a week. So they go through and they monitor everything. So they come through in the morning, they pick up from the day before, trash, everything. They have reservation boards that they put their names on. 
Um, typically what happens is if uh, Eric is there with his family um, and Richard comes up and he has a reservation, he has priority use over the reservation. Should nothing happen, then Richard can call either the front desk staff at the RCC or call PD. All Richard has to do is show his confirmation and then unfortunately Eric and his staff would, or his family would have to do this for us. But in my experience, it works pretty well because for scout events and stuff, there's friends the pavilion, community park and stuff, and we've gone out and people are doing things like, hey, we have a reservation like that. Okay, we're good. So, yeah. This is a fantastic um, piece of property for our community and access to the lake. What, if any, part of this will address access to all of this? We what access to the lake to improve access. I don't I'm the So the roadway. So the washboard. Yeah. So a lot of this area up through here will be repaired. Um, directly underneath is what we're gonna have to address. Um, um, but that does not include so we, we kind of talked about what some possible solutions could be. Um, but obviously we don't want to have a smooth roadway and then you hit twenty five foot area where it's bumpy, then that's something that we we're going to work out to make sure we can fix. So, so we lead into the new plan. But I think what Aaron's trying to say is the scope of cost that, that this is looking at does not cover the area under the trestle. Why is that? Is that just because it's controlled by the railroad versus... No, it just, it's not part of this scope. It was never scoped out. Is it actually on the list of the it, it would add a lot of, <laughs> no, okay. we could put it on. I, in, in, I mean, in my opinion, under the trestle, all you need to do is put some black top overlay because it's a, it's not a very used roadway and you can get away with black top. The thing would be, would be fantastic. Yeah. But, yeah. but if this vision gets realized, it's going to get a lot more traffic. Because I will go here instead of paddling in the park. Thank you. Yeah, that maybe in a future bond we can. Yeah, and you're talking about the difference between over half a million to $20,000. Yeah. So how many soccer fields are we losing down there? That's just, just their process. It's not even really, really a, there's one field out there. there. It's, it's not it's we don't field. field. It's just a pickup field. Yeah. Nobody we don't rent it. I mean people go down there and they do donuts in the graphic parking lot. I mean sure. my understanding is that this used to be a boat launch area on the further mm -hmm. south side of the park. When there used to be a road going back there. Yeah. I don't know if it was an official boat launch, but it was ramped well enough naturally or unnaturally. That you could launch a boat. Is that something we need? Is another boat ramp? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's. I don't, it may not even be deep enough. Main Street probably mm -hmm. drive straight into that. I, but well, now this is further south. Yeah. If you look on the satellite view. Anyway, sorry, we're going off. But but that being said, I I agree we need <coughs> another boat ramp, but not here. If we're encouraging paddle traffic and the trail through here, I don't know that we want to start to encourage more power boat traffic. I don't even think. It might not even be deep for running around for your larger bonus. I run aground like you do. <laughs> so. and I, I think that's what this, this part is meant for is more for kayaks or canoes or you know more single use, not so much motorized fishing boats. Real quick question on phase one which are circle drop. What parking spaces are going to be provided? Because Load. So yes, so I didn't get honestly I didn't get an update from the landscape architect, but there'll be some some parking spots right in right in here. Sorry, how it's proposed. There there will not be many. Um, definitely one or two handicap uh, spots, so it is ADA accessible, um, and then you probably have a, a few more. But people are gonna until honestly until this is developed. People are going to probably still go to paddle point drop and say, I'm going to pick me up in an hour or however long it takes me to paddle from paddle point to um, Lakefront Congress. 
Do we have that many kayakers sitting around? There, there are quite a few. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 I know two. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. There's a, there's Three. One. Three. Yeah. So the this phase two covers up to mm -hmm. this kind of center point where the dips in, basically right, right here. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. 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 Right, right in through here. That area that's in the top to the south would be phase three. Yes, phase three and phase four. This was always meant to be a multi-phase project. Um, whether it's a three-phase or a four-phase. Um, but as you go back further south, oh geez. Um, <laughs> a mistake. Um, so this was meant to be a um, playground area. Uh, more natural areas because it is next to the lake. So more crushed granite, more uh, shade structures, parking, uh, turnaround, fishing pier, boardwalk, if you will, um, through where the wave line is depicted. So I thought it was D. No, it's right here. It's D. Yeah, it's right there. A. Oh, it's a dock. Okay. A is the A is like the boardwalk. So it's like, it's like it was going up in the air. <laughs> Sorry. And then with those are uh, six picnic shelters with tables and grill, which is roughly about $300,000, 50000 each. So we've got $331,000 remaining. They're designing phase one now. Mm -hmm. You don't know that the startup cost every time you go through and start a new phase. Um, it's already April, May, it's May already. Twelve months from now, this goes to the voters. Three months later, the bonds are sold. What's the construction time frame for phase one as a tie in phase two? Is it better to tie them together and do that whole section at once? Wait for the bond <coughs> Right now, it's, it's, you know, no one's too many other plans to pay off soccer games and pay some fish. You know, one thing we learned with Hereford Park was that we found out when you do those two phases together, you save money uh, because they're not mobilizing different times. Um, that's, honestly, I mean, that's kind of what we found out. Um, so I mean, it's, you know, potentially we, we could wait, but you know, it's double edged sword. You wait and the bond doesn't pass, then you're back to. So then again, but then again, too, your phase one. I don't think really it's adequate. Like you said, there's going to be a couple of parking spots there. Yeah, if we start, like, you, you spend all the money to, to do that, and then people are frustrated because they can't park. They can't use the parking And kind of like you said, if they, if they don't pass it, then you've got this phase one bill that is nominally just better than it is now. So this one. Okay, Thanks. So uh, parking lot improvements, uh, we're asking for two million dollars, and, and here's why. Um, some of these areas that we have, we are increasing traffic. We are increasing programs. Um, uh, one of the, one of the things that we talked about was, for instance, Springfield Park. Um, with the growth that we have, if you've been to the Springfield Park. You don't have many spots to park, and uh, on a nice spring day, when there's hardly any mosquitoes around, that whole bottom parking lot is full. Um, we've talked about adding some ditch programs down there. I'm not going to go into details because nothing is set in stone yet. But should we start playing baseball games out there? Should we start doing some of the other activities that we're doing? We're, we're going to need more parking in Springfield Park. So basically, what we're asking for is basically just doubling. That bottom parking lot into two times what it is. Um, you're going to ask me how many spots are there out in the county, so don't ask me that. I don't know. We'll want to know that. Right, yes. Um, so, that Springfield Park is to help the growth programs. Um, Dexon Road, which was, has been a concern to a lot of people, has been roadside parking and safety. Um, I don't know much 
many statistics about that. But if we could accommodate some parking on the north side of the park and get people off of Texas Road, a lot of people park there to utilize the trail. Um, that's a 1.7 mile trail if you do it correctly. Uh, so people are parking there, walking down the trail, um, and then coming back, whether they're walking their dog, whether they're fishing, whether they're riding a bike, uh, whatnot. So that is one question that we had. Uh, and then lastly is the Congrove Park South parking lot, which is on the south side of Wet Zone, where we just installed the brand new disc golf course. If you've ever been there during the summer on a Wet Zone day, you cannot find parking there. And what's happening is, is people are pulling in and they're saying there's no parking and they're leaving. So it's lost revenue generators for us um, because everything up to behind the RCC typically is taken. And people don't want to walk their kids from the front of the RCC, so they're, they're taking them. So um, with the growth of that, this, the disc golf course, What's our attendance from May through August? Uh, we feel it would be a benefit to help us accommodate those additional users who want to come to Wet Zone or those people that want to come play this way. Where did we get the quote of three million? Where did we get them? So I had received a quote for Springfield Park and then uh, Gun Grove Park. Dex Road is going to be a little bit more um, intense. Involved. It's bigger. It's like bigger. Yeah, because there's going to be a it lot. Looks like, it looks like it's much bigger than, than these others. Because those are those are houses. Yeah. yeah. Just measure it's about a tenth of a mile. Yeah. Do we know how many parking spots for the next one? Or? We did not. And, and I'll be honest, the reason it is not is because typically you have to hire somebody to do for this sort of deep analysis. And I correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, but we did not. So we, we took a guesstimate of what we felt was the best option at this point. And your guesstimate, did you 15, 25? Uh, 20. 20. With four handicap spots. So and what's on, is this the, the one that faces 66? The other side of it? Or? This is on the, on the <coughs> north side of 66. So if you know where the RC uh, radar controls, Flying oh, yeah. Sorry, it's back that way. Yeah. The, uh, just to heads up, I, I believe the reason why they didn't expand the parking lot behind the Congo Park was because there was, that was the cutoff for the right of way uh, for utilities. So that's just something to consider. Um, you just may want to look into that and see if we can actually construct a parking lot on the surface. I believe there is, um, it's not gas, but culture. Uh, water line, and then the overhead uh, commercial rate of house. Is this something to look at? Yeah, no, absolutely. So on the Con Road, um, do we have any traffic studies or anything about how many people are coming to that lot? But instead of saying, well, let's take this piece of land and turn it into parking, Maybe a better approach might be, well, we need 100 more parking spots, and then you design it to accommodate that. Oh, which one? I'm sorry, which one was that? A condo. Oh, OK. So instead of, OK, so you're saying you could do multiple areas with more parking spots. They either expand it that way and then also that way. Just right, so if, yeah. if we knew how many people, <laughs> It's tough to do because it depends on what season it is and if there's events going. But if we could estimate how many parking spots we need versus we have this piece of land and let's get as many, you know, if we need, if we say we want to try to get 100 more parking spots at the Con Road, then design it to do that instead of saying, well, we've got this piece of land and maximize that. Because it might change the design or how we do it too. So. I'm just thinking the police have those things that you can just lay across the road, right? You just do some traffic counts on the end of the stars. You probably want 
to one for the front part of the yeah. And then you know how many cars are actually going that far. Yeah. No, we kind of contract service. Yeah. Okay. I like that Dexon Road because I've seen a lot of them as well today. Ready blue bottom phase two. Um, this is one of the parts that we really want to set this for you. Um, estimated cost is one and a half million dollars. We're looking at adding a half mile loop trail, which is going to be roughly about 500,000. Um, an additional restroom facility. And one that we just added at the side, <coughs> something of that, that sort. Um, that also includes utilities and everything that needs to be run. So, um, a 2,100 square foot playground and safety servicing. So, we're installing the playground either on Corn Place, which is at Kids Kingdom, or turf, proof turf, which is at uh, Twin Star as well as Springfield. Uh, picnic with uh, pavilion with picnic tables and grill. I believe there's two, two or three of those, and then headed parking spaces, which will get people off of the um, on-street parking. One of the concerns with our uh, on-street parking is parents who come in with a van, a minivan, who just kids just want to open up the van, hop out, um, and take off to the playground because they're excited. Uh, so we feel that if we, someone incorporated, pull in and head in parking spots. That will eliminate some of that um, concern. So, have, do we think that a traditional playground is appropriate for that site, given the uh, memorial nature? Given the memorial nature, right? I, I, I don't know that that's the right place for a traditional playground setting if the park is a memorial park. spin it to where it's about you know the phoenix and it's about the, uh, the entire park so yeah i mean that would have to take a little bit of thought um, and you know definitely some creativity mm -hmm. um, but but absolutely you know I, I think it's a neighborhood park i think it would be used um you know with with the trail and you know with the family coming over just want to have a, a little picnic or I think it has a lot of potential for to be able to accommodate children, right? I mean, there's a lot of different different types of parks, right? Like kitchens, things like that, that all kind of associate with 
you know, growing new life, right? The the gardening and stuff like that. So, I mean, you could do something with kids that gardening, like kitchens kind of thing. Um, yeah, I'm not saying you know don't don't the, have some kind of uh, feature area for kids, but the, the traditional, but the traditional playground. playground yeah. I think if you're going to do a traditional playground and don't put it near the sculpture because you want to separate those areas. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, and they're going to think the sculpture is a playground and you can climb it. <laughs> well, I, I think Aaron brought up a good point, though, and you kind of reinforce that. It's a neighborhood park that was a victim of circumstance. So, had, But it was a victim of circumstance. Right, I understand that, but it's still primary focus is to serve as a, as a spot for those neighborhoods, for families to, to utilize and gather. And, I, I think there needs to be something for families to do other than just be memorial. Maybe in the backfield you put the playground or something. I don't, I don't know. It's just. Can you flip the playground equipment to get this a street or something? But, but I, I think I agree with everyone. I, I think this is a unique opportunity in, in whether you, however you spin it. You spend it over what you want it to look like in the is going to be. So, you know, this, this is our opportunity to jump all over this and, you know, whether it's some sort of memorialized playground or some, some type of features as you walk the trail or you know, whatever. So, I, I think there are plenty of opportunities here and we just have to figure out the opportunities. I think also, I'm more urban, so I'm more organic play type areas. Is Save you a lot of money, but yeah. If, if, if the plan is to stick with the traditional playground, I'd at least consider moving it to a different area of the, of the field. Uh, and not be one of the you know, very first things that you drive up on. Uh, actually, there's, there's also some ideas of maybe playgrounds for, uh, I'm not sure if this is correct, but for like autistic children need to be a little more quieter, you know, spread out more so that they have, you know, a place to go and play and still be able to maintain their sanity and so they do that. So, and I think that would be, a, again, a quieter exactly. type arrangement. The other side of that, though, too, is that is our memorial to this. And, I, and something more needs to be done with that part. It just kind of, it was very... It's a lonely. It's a lonely, yeah. Yeah, it's a lonely part. It's a lonely part. You don't have to put the kids in the car seats, driving three miles. <laughs> easier for you know, mom or dad to run down there and put them on their bicycle and run them down. It's just it's nice to have them here to talk to you know, and do hit, hit the swings or the slides, whatever it is. Kids are not, they're not going to get it. The, you know, the, under, the under 15 are not going to understand the whole thing. So I like your idea of somehow doing both things. It's big enough you can do both and get away with it. And, and respect the spaces that are there. Uh, but putting a playground in the very front center is is just is distracting from from, from the incident <laughs> that occurred. So that's not Right. But there may be a possibility get Google Maps up there. It's always helpful for me to see what's there. We talk to these folks who put a driveway. Be on the northwest side. So be like yeah. over here, <coughs> over in the side. Right. Yeah, that way it's far enough. Uh, uh, so the so quieter. Uh, we we don't want to utilize alleyways for that. That's that's a, that's a, that's a street. Where are you? I I I can get a dead end. Do a right way through what looks like something. 
Oh, oh I see. Oh, right here. And you can put our driveway right there. We could be here for a long time designing this one yeah, part. But well, one last see. thing I, I do want to say before we move on is I could see potentially parking there but the playground being further south there. If you look at putting a playground back there, it's actually right in the sight line of if you're looking at the Phoenix. So what you'd see is right. the Phoenix with a playground behind it. Yeah, the next right. Right. And, and I'll let everyone know too, kind of like a little bit of a twin star. We'll, we'll have a public, public input meeting here mm -hmm. so we can get feedback from all those homeowners that are in that area. There are those folks in the house who threw the tornado. Mm -hmm. they, they were in the house and the tornado went by. I've got pictures on here. A two by six, they went through the wall of their house. Uh, I was there three days after the tornado. So I know One of our certain members is house back, so to there. He almost lost his I'm, I'm so. in the community just behind it, like the yeah. states. Yeah. All my neighbors, they have three houses. So, kayak and dock launches. Um, Obviously, one of our strategic initiatives is to provide more lakefront opportunities. Uh, three of the places that we're talking about adding some kayak launches uh, would be Lakeside South Park, uh, Sunset Park, and Columbia Park. As you know, Sunset Park and Columbia Park are currently not developed parks, um, but they do have accessibility to them. Uh, if, if you look at I, the top two pictures are just their, their example pictures of what we could potentially put there. Um, I do have cost estimates for um, actual kayak launch as well as installation, uh, which as you'll see is $225,000. And then any type of shoreline improvements for uh, Lakeside South Park, which we just talked about a little bit ago, to accommodate the potential of installing a kayak launch and then potentially installing that to undeveloped parks. Obviously, we'll have to have some sort of shoreline improvements, some sort of restabilization of that sort. Uh, so we're looking at $500,000. On the unimproved parks like Sunset and Columbia, if you put a launch in there, and I, I know that Sunset, there's kind of a cul-de-sac mm -hmm. that's kind of a, or a circle, but if you build it, they will come, and so I think you need to consider parking as well. I mean, it could be street parking, but you know, just yeah, Columbia Park has one street that runs parallel to the shoreline there, which at least gives you some opportunity. This is all contracted work. This is not your folks do. Oh, absolutely, it's contracted. I don't know. Yeah. No, that, that's a really good question. That's a no, no but yes. So the launch is over with you. If I can ask, so uh, the um, the con road park would be the concrete launch as opposed to these. Now what I want to do is um, almost a what's well, an ADA accessible kind of launch, somewhat of what is at that point right now, but is a little bit different bigger um, we would have the opportunity to launch four or five kayaks at one time than we would at that point all right so originally yes we were going to do a walking kayak launch um, with no john boat accessibility but i, I think it's going to be to our benefit mm -hmm. that we provide the same opportunity at lakefront Con grove as we do at Paddle point might be a little bit more expensive, but I think in the end it's going to benefit us a little bit more. Well, one of the reasons I bring up the parking is that's the biggest challenge right now at, at Powerpoint Park is parking. Um, there's many times I've had to dump my stuff and go park yeah. across the way and walk back. Anything else on this one? Point Park Phase 3, um, as you guys know, we 
we have uh, phase two done. Uh, we're looking at adding a fishing pier, um, some signage, as well as some trail seating and benches. Uh, currently, what's in uh, progress now is adding uh, lighting as well as security cameras. It's part of what was approved uh, for the council in the $100,000 bond with our 13 parks. Um, the issue with this, again, is parking. Um, you know, we, we have tossed around an additional kayak launch, but that's great. But where do you park once you drop your, once you drop your kayak? So um, right now, we, we feel it's best to look at adding a fishing pier. So we're not putting a fishing pier on top of the kayak launch. Um, some trail signage to kind of direct people from, even from uh, coming off 66 to those that are on the, the northwest side of Terralago. In addition to you know, whatever short on purpose might need to be made uh, in that essence. So. Technically, Scenic Point Park goes underneath 66 to the south side as well, correct? I mean, it's not I think accessible. That was the long term. That's the goal. Uh, it actually does, yeah. It does not. It, it stops. So it comes up, it comes up the boardwalk and it stops right at 66. So right, but I mean, it, it's considered park land. City Parkland, or is it not? No, uh, but there was there's a long-term vision that it would go under the bridge and connect all the way to the hospital area. Because that could be the parking solution too, as well as potentially a boat ramp solution. Well, so that was going to go to that after when he's done with his presentation. Okay. Do we know who owns that property right there? Is that access? We're going to go to that after oh, the presentation. Okay. <laughs> Any questions on this before it goes on? Okay, go ahead. Uh, Rock Community Center Gym A, as I spoke on earlier, um, the, the life of the gym floor that is downstairs is on this last leg. Um, we typically, every two or three years, would come in, um, we would have it recoded, if you will, with polyurethane. Uh, recently, we've had to sand it because, we've, because of the flood, the busted pipes. But literally, a gym floor is supposed to be that thick. Our gym floor is like that thick. So we're starting to have uh, nails pop up, uh, which is becoming unsafe. Uh, is, isn't suitable for youth playing basketball. Is it suitable for seniors playing pickleball? Anybody, to be honest, whether they're playing at the gym or whatnot. So what we're asking for is 400000 um, that would replace, restripe the hardwood flooring. They'd come in, they'd rip everything out, put in a new flooring, restripe it, repaint it, make everybody happy, the basketball players, the volleyball players, the pickleball players, um, basically would go back to the way it was, and as well as install six new glass backboards. So if you haven't been to the RCC, the two main goals are glass. The four side goals are, I don't know what they are, but probably something back from the yeah, uh, so we're, we're wanting to update those as well because our youth basketball plays sideways and then our older kids play full court. So it would just help with that. Um, adding a gym divider would help as well. Um, the reason we would do that is because we are slowly starting to run out of programming in space. Um, so in order for us to try to continue to be sustainable, meet 70% sustainability, um, it will help us divide programs, but also allow us to provide open gym opportunities for our members, uh, which is important to us. Because on any given night, you can go to there, there's all the gyms are taken with basketball, there's ropes going on, they have different classes in the conference room, so we're kind of running out of space, so we're trying to be creative in. And you'll see the gym dividers in a lot of gyms throughout the country. Um, just because it helps divide the board in half. Uh, interior painting, we've started to have some, um, some of the paint starting to chip, some of the paint starting to get old. Um, so that would be basically from the bottom level all the way up to the red arm. So everything would be repainted. Uh, and then lastly would be improved bleacher seating. If you guys come to the Rick Center, we have the, the three-tier metal bleachers that we can't keep the end caps on, so they become a safety hazard. So we're looking at something a little bit more permanent. Um, maybe not so much what is in the bottom right-hand picture, but something that's a little bit more, more safe and a little bit more suitable 
that those being like collapsible? So yes, so the challenge with being collapsible is we're limited because of the space. So you see the ones that pull out, we could probably do a two or three tier, which doesn't extend as far. Um, you'll see that, that takes up probably a good 15 feet, but we can't put those on the sides because it runs into the court. So they would have to go on the east and west side of the court. Um, but what we're trying to do is make sure that people have enough seating when they come and watch their four, five, six, seven year old kid, to be honest. So. The only other thing is, is the interior painting. Again, that might be a maintenance thing. I don't know if we can bond on that. Community Park Athletic Field improvements. Um, we have gone around and around and around about this. <coughs> Basically, we have some remaining funding that we're looking at doing. Um, some soccer field improvements if you haven't been out to community park some of our soccer fields do this really bad so what we're trying to do is get with uh, landscape unlimited to help us come out with come up with some sort of plan to help level it um, that's probably about a three-month process but we have to go around what our way say soccer seasons are so that would be more of a winter project than anything else um, we do have a basketball court out there if you haven't seen it. It's just to the south of the restroom, front restroom, if you will. It needs, needs to be resurfaced. We want to upgrade the basketball hoops. They're the old plastic triple rimmed. Rimmed, so when you hit it, it goes boing, and it bounces off kind of the cartoons. So we want to update that. Um, one of the biggest things we find out is, where am I going? Well, your community park. Where am I going? So we have soccer fields in the front. We have softball fields in the back. Baseball fields on the left. More soccer fields in the back. A pavilion, a playground. It's such a big park that if you went in there, you wouldn't have any idea unless you go there all the time. So one of the things is we've talked to um, some designers who said there there are um, wayfinding signage that we could install in the park, which would help us in the long run and make it easier for patrons when they come. So that's one of the things that, that we have talked about. Um, softball field renovations, we, we've discussed four, four full turf fields. Um, in, in my opinion, if you're going to go turf, you need to go the entire field. It's not just a infield turf, outfield grass. I've seen a lot of issues with just having an artificial infield and a grass outfield. There's a lot of transition issues from dirt moving, so you're constantly having to do that. Whereas if you do a full turf field, everything's up. So there's no adjustments, there's no lips um, between the infield and outfield, which would make it easier for people to, one, for us to maintain, two, wouldn't become some sort of a trip hazard. Um, if we did go to uh, turf fields, it would cut back on downtime for our ball fields. Um, it would cut down on cancellations, um, which would in turn bring us more revenue. However, with all of that comes equipment that is needed to maintain it. So we would have to purchase the equipment, yep, the brushes, so all of that would have to come into play if we decided to do that. Um, what we basically, uh, came up with was $850,000 to a million dollars per field, and that is for the entire field. Um, infield only is about $450,000, but again, that, that is some concern uh, with even with some of the other cities and other entities we talked to. Um, with that, we're looking at renovation of the dugouts and fencing. Obviously, if you want to put in a new turf field, you don't want to keep old fencing. Uh, the way our dugouts are designed now, they're not user friendly. Um, a lot of the guys, I used to play out there, a lot of the guys like to hang on the fence posts and do pull ups and chin ups and come and you know, bang their bats and everything else. So we would obviously have to widen the dugouts, update those amenities. Uh, in addition to that, the concession stand and the restroom that are out there, we would like to upgrade as well. And also add a shade over the playground, which is between the back two fields. If you didn't know, um, that's been there for a few years. Um, 
use them. So that, that's kind of the overall um, project scope for community park. Uh, basically adding turf to the softball field side only, which are the fields to the north of the park. Um, in the future, we would look at adding turf fields to the south. Um, but right now, we generate more activity on that side of the, the complex than we do on the south side. Is there any safe, any um, monetary savings when it comes to watering or not watering the schools? Or? So we do water them. Currently, we do water them. Yes. So if you want the artificial turf, do you want to you water them? Water them. Water them. Water them. No. But there does come added maintenance. So batter's boxes, um, pitcher's mound, all the areas that are positioned layers, you would have to replace that turf because it gets worn down so much. So there are, there's pros and cons to both. Well, we've done so much research that. If you do, if you do a mixed one though, or an infield only, you would still have to irrigate the outfield. Yes. And would you still not have some of the challenges with all games? I mean, because if it rains and the infield's dry, but the outfield's a mud pit. Yes, so when landscapes are unlimited did their analysis of the fields, the outfield, now with the exception of field four, that was just recently finished, um, they hold water really bad, really bad. So even if we had a turf infield, that outfield can be soaked and you still can't play on a soaked outfield. Well, when they install a turf, don't they install drainage underneath it? Yeah, for just yeah. an infield. But oh, okay. if you're talking about a synthetic turf infield versus a grass outfield. No, I'm talking about if you go full turf. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I misunderstood you. It's okay. What's the life expectancy of the whole term before? Before it has to be. And I, I've had, I had the privilege of having lots of conversation with Mike Ladd over this. So the first installation, you've got to do a lot of sub work. The second installation, you've got to basically put fine carpet and fill on top. Uh, so the first installation, you're talking $3.4 million to do all four fields in the uh, softball complex. What's the average life of that? And get, getting to the, the annual maintenance costs and the um, appreciated cost of the turf for the light. So we some all, from all of the um, in all of the I guess, research we've done, 13 to 15 years is expected life. However, you're replacing those certain worn out areas year year and a half in. Uh, so that would have to be taken into consideration as well. Uh, because right now we're on a plan to do a four-year rotation on the dirt fields to do 11 over the first field over the field four. Yes, correct. In addition to wet zone, this is also, as I understand, a revenue generator for Parks Department. To what extent? Is that the case in this so, so we get a percentage based on what games or leagues or tournaments um, are run out there. I don't know specifically what percentage we're given, um, but ultimately, yes. I mean, the more tournaments, the more games they play out there, the more revenue that we would generate. Yeah, back off of that one. Um, do any other cities around us have turf baseball fields? So. My park superintendent has visited about four or five different cities. Um, and uh, Euless, they've been to Red Oak, they've been to Mansfield, um, they've gone up to Denison. So, oh yeah, he had made it to Adam, but he did talk to Joe. So, so yes, that he has gone out there, visited with their superintendents, asked the different questions, uh, you know, compiled a list of, here's what I found out, here's the pros, definitely here's the cons, um, to everything, so we have done our, on our end of the research. Thank you. Did GSD Bond have some some for turf as well? GSD. I think they're I think they're looking yeah, looking yeah. turf. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Like the guys <coughs> said, we're kind of we used to be kind of top level in terms of competing for tournaments around the Metroplex, but as they've added turf to their fields because of the certainty of being able to play, that we're slick a little bit. And the leveling of the fields is going to help us because they can recover more quickly the whole water. But 
kind of becomes a question of competitive edge. It is a revenue generator, although I think probably still in that maybe overall. Maybe final change. Would the options of liability insurance be less with a full term? No? I don't believe so. So let me, let me ask you this. You say if we go full turf and come back up on, on up to speed with being a revenue generating item, would that revenue be used then to go ahead and do those replacements, those biannual replacements in your batter's box and things like that versus? Yeah, some, some of it would, absolutely. Um, you know, not, not only with that, but trying to keep that whole, that whole area up to speed. Um, you do have to buy the extra carpet, if you will. Um, so, you know, that is one thing that, that would be purchased with some of that stuff. I think, to your point, that any revenue generated from the parks has to go back into two parks. You did mention there would be additional equipment for maintenance. Is that included in this, or do we have any I mean, it's a significant amount. So it would be the brush, like you talked about. I don't, I don't know specifics. I can get all that. Uh, some, of, some of it is attachments that potentially we could purchase that would attach to our current toros that we have, same rows, if you will. Um, so yeah, I, I could definitely find that out and see how much that would cost. I think the Eric's point is that that would be you should include that in the package for. to redo it, I mean, you're patching along the way, so 13 to 15 year, but the infrastructure is already in place, so basically all you're doing is your subfloor's there. Your subfloor's there, you just put down your carpet. That's true, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, the subfloor, is that? The drainage. The drainage, that, it's basically like a version of the well, it's yeah, four percent, and they'll contour it too, so it drains off as well. And once that's in place, it's not going to move like dirt. I mean, you, know, you can have dirt wash away your road. Is that the same kind of soft surface that's at some of our playgrounds? So Springfield, I'm just getting ready to add that. So that's what it is. So the contour, so they they call it a crown. Yeah. So as, as it rains, that the water doesn't sit like a bird bath, like some basketball courts do. They crown it. So that water drains off the edge and it runs into those French drains, and it's gone. traffic sometimes comes with wear and tear. Um, we're asking for $1 million and that is to help replace some of the surface. And I'll tell you because if you see in the bottom left hand picture and then the bottom right hand picture, it's all starting to wear away. Even after we just fixed it? Yeah. So then that gets to the question of do we need to think about the other service? So we've talked about going to turf, uh, which is what we've done at, which is what we, we talked about, it, which is what we've done at Springfield and um, Twin Star. But we felt more comfortable with going back with some sort of service like this, or there are other services of which we have not researched that are out there that we could. Because my thing is, you know, 
continuing to, to bond out for something that doesn't even last a year, two years, is not financially responsible. So what what is the financially responsible thing to do? If this product isn't working, what is what is a better solution? Or do we just need to go back to the mulch? You know, is mulch, is mulch the answer because that is cheap to maintain? It's a little muddy. It's not as nice as this, but we don't we don't have the money. It seems like to be to have this kind of service for such a high use park. It's very different than Twin Star or a park like that. It's not getting as much use in Kids Kingdom, but this is a regional destination mm -hmm. playground, and so. I would challenge you to go back and think about other solutions than continuing to sink money into a product that we know does not last. Um, when I was growing up, you just fell on the ground. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fell off the metal jungle gym on the ground. Right? Look at the way you're showing the point. Well, yeah, I, I tend to agree. I kind of like the old uh, blue chip, but it does produce accessibility. It does. It does, and that, and but the thing is, a million dollars every three years for a surface we know is not going to last. We I mean we we just fixed this surface <coughs> last year, last year, and now we're having to do it again. We are there areas that are going to wear more quickly and more quickly in other areas? Is is. I mean, really, the only place you're going to find more place that hasn't been used is underneath all of the equipment. I mean, underneath the bridges. Because everywhere else, from the dinosaur dig to the swings to all the little feet, run, all just things. all over the place. And, and it's it's just a high traffic park. And absolutely, we will we'll definitely go back and you know, find out whatever solutions we going to have. But, even with more in place, you're still having to put protected down every 18 months. That's the recommended, yeah. And that was pretty expensive. Yeah. Uh, I, I, was, I noticed something about broken slats and, and part of your listing there. Are these safety concerns that someone will be injured? Or how, how, what is, what's so I couldn't fit the other picture on here. So one of the slats is on the side. So there's a, there's a, there's a chip. You mean, you mean the fence? Not a fence, but on one of the, on the side of the playground feature. Um, it is not a safety hazard. We, we just had all, had all of our playgrounds inspected by third-party company certified. That, that's that's not a safety hazard. So it's more of the ones that are starting to bow, um, the ones that have little chips in them. Yeah, that needs to be replaced. What about rubber mulch? Wait, hold on. You said you have something. So I do have some concerns because the long-term constant exposure to turf, um, it, turf does con contain carcinogens. Um, and I, as a mother myself, have a child on a playground, I mean, we have our own, but almost every single day. Um, and we've got daycares that are going there every week, constant exposure. So highly don't recommend <laughs> turf on that. I, I have not looked on, because we did our own research for our own playground. I haven't looked on the rubber mulch. We just decided to stick with the grass and install our fridge drain. Um, but do have concern that you're on the playground. Um, my other question is, is because this is a destination playground, why is the priority not higher? Because they've already sunk so much money into the same thing. I mean, so, so here's the thing. So, and I'll give you a perfect example. The the piece in the top left hand corner, all of the stuff is recently starting to crack, if you will. We have different funding that we're trying to replace these pieces with. Um, over time, all of those pieces on that playground are going to be replaced. Um, so we're currently in the process of looking for a replacement piece for that top and the top left hand corner. And the little spotter climber thing that's on the bottom right that's been closed forever. The issue that we're running into is a lot of these pieces of equipment are not made anymore. So you cannot find replacement pieces for it. So you're basically stuck trying to have to figure out what you're going to put in place of that. So, for instance, the top left hand corner might be a teeter totter. So you have to go with a more, more 2020 
Keep it tough. So. So the fence around um, Kids Kingdom was a big fundraiser. Mm -hmm. They sold slats. I mean, I've got a couple of them up there. Could we looked into doing that or something similar as well? To that doesn't really raise enough money to do anything meaningful. It was more of a. It was more following the what had been done before with the original Kids Kingdom and trying to keep that tradition. Uh, but in terms of actual money that made a, <laughs> made a difference, it didn't really. I mean, back when we first built the park, the first Kids Kingdom, you know, costs were quite different. Um, when was it? Sorry. When was it? When was it completely updated last? Compl like, total, like, redone, redone. Like, right? 18, 2019? Uh, like, Open the branch park. Like you got well, we opened it right after the tornado. <coughs> because we were trying we were trying to figure out how we were gonna finish because I mean this was a volunteer build. Um, so you know with any volunteer, myself included, I'm a volunteer for our youth sports, but there comes a point where you're like, nah, I am not gonna do this anymore. So we we tried to finish with staff, but as soon as the tornado hit, it was like we um, so we probably for the last three weeks, along with um, the, the company that came down to help us, we finished it. Um, but we try to do, I mean, obviously we had to do inspections. Um, we try to stay on top of everything that we can, you know, with this, this playground. Um, so, you know, as far as replacing some of these pieces, we haven't really replaced any of those pieces. And then again, just learning the history, has Kids Kingdom ever been a part of a bond in history? I mean, it wasn't it a part of the uh, 2015 bond election? So I have to go back. Yeah, because I, I think part, as I recall, part of it was, was funded by the city, and then yeah. part was. was Which is why I'm a fundraiser. Yeah, yeah. Like Home Depot donated money. Right. Whatever. But to the surface issue, I'm thinking it may be worth completely like getting just getting rid of that. So it's going to probably cost quite a bit, sure. but in the long run, it will save us a million dollars a year. Sure. Um, and maybe something like the rubber mulch that holds up a lot better than your traditional wood mulch. We definitely can get some options. Yeah, I don't know. And the corn clay just isn't any more work. And I, just as a citizen myself, a lot of, you know, the complaints that I hear is why do we continue building new parks when we can't maintain the current ones that we have that are so popular, right? Um, so that's, that's yeah, we hear that, yeah. 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 Good. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It's good. Uh, Shoreward Park improvements. Um, if you haven't been to Shorewood Park, this is one of the parks that really needs some attention. Uh, you see the parking lot in the bottom right hand corner, that, that really needs to be redone. You go out, as soon as you pull in, you bottom out, you, I drive a truck, and every time I pull in there, I'm dusting them all around. But um, we, we pass as many times as we, as we, we can. Uh, it's just getting to the point where it really needs to be redone. Adding a new playground and again uh, updating the surface right there. That's actually the mulch, um, wood fiber, if you will, that's currently there. So we'd like to update that playground and then update the playground surface as well. Um, and then one of the things that has been on our list for a little bit has been adding irrigation. So you put in a baseball field, that's a dirt baseball field. Um, it doesn't have much irrigation. So all the turf around that. Uh, when it gets hot, you can imagine when it dies, cracks, so it makes it sometimes unsafe to play. So, uh, one of the things that we're asking for is some additional funds to help with the playground, the parking lot, as well as the uh, irrigation. It's shade for the for the playground part of that as well. It is not. Um, if you're looking at shade, you're looking at probably another. $30,000. We might be able to accommodate that through CDBG funds, which is just the shade structure. 
I mean, I noticed in this part there's a lot of shade in those trees already. So 
Absolutely. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a, just, just a pile. That's a quick area. So we've already spent all of the money. <laughs> This is just my summary slide. Um, this kind of tells you what we talked about, um, all the different projects that are in there. Sorry, from the top. Additional What's your grand total? You what? What's your grand total? Oh, okay. Oh, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, you know, yeah, I, say, so my list kept growing. They're like, are you gonna ask for? They're like, are you gonna ask for this? And I'm like, um, I said, all right, I'll ask for that. And it's like, are you gonna ask for that? And I was like, all right, fine. Well, you, you received that because you asked. Thank you. I have yes. one more uh, item to add, though, just to consider. Um, <coughs> we only have one public boat ramp in the city, uh, and it's it's really not public. It is, but. It's really designed for uh, Sapphire Bay users and marine users. So we have a we have a need in the city. Of, you know, like being a lakeside community, we should have definitely more than one boat ramp. There is a parcel. Uh, I don't know if you can quote the Google Maps. Um, there is a parcel that council has discussed before, looking at potentially um, to purchase. Uh, actually, I think this parcel may be. City of Dallas property could be. Um, we'll we'll try to figure it out. Uh, she's going to pull it. This is the other side of 66 from the city. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the other other side. Yes. Yeah. Um, just so everybody can see. So this road dead ends right here. If we continued that road, built a boat ramp. Boat ramp, boat ramp there, and then the parking lot could be here for the boat trailers. This is private property. This is currently under a plan review. Is that correct? Or plan? Or is it? It's on. It, there's a site plan on it. For, it's form based code for multi-family development. Um, the, it's permitted by right. Uh, the project is still alive. We're going to check tomorrow to see if it's still alive. But it's so what did you do for it? Well, a day was before. <laughs> it's before we had the SCP. Yeah, so the project's been going on since 2018. Yeah, it's been the landscape and the farm just not going to be that. Boy, man. Before you bring it before you have to cancel? No, but the he keeps his project alive by resubmitting. We're not closing at the right times. Anyways, <laughs> so, um, yeah, <coughs> build the parking lot there, but have the boat ramp there. Oh, you've got that old remnant of that street there. That's Well, so that, that's... There's your that, foundation for the boat so, ramp. So, so that's not a street. That actually, between here and here, used to be a uh, marina a long time ago. <coughs> that was just to keep the waves from bouncing in. Yeah. So that, that also is a bonus feature there, is that you already have the uh, wave breaks right. that are built. Uh, so when you're launching your boat, it's, it's a lot easier to get in. So could we, could we get an estimate about, and you got, it's not just parking, you gotta think about trailers too, about how many trailers yeah. we could get in that piece of spot. It we just can, but I don't think it'll fit quite a lot. Well, I know. So the est this came up on the 2015 <coughs> bond committee, and we waived on it. It came in late. The estimate then was 500,000. Oh, we probably should have done it then. Probably um, 1.5 now. But it's one that keeps getting passed. But I do think. I, I mean, we point, literally live in a lake community. Our yeah. city's two peninsulas, and at some point we, we have to do it. Access to the land. At some point we have to do it. We're we're a lakeside community. We only have one public boat ramp. Um, it's a comment I hear all the time from citizens saying, you know, you're a lakeside community, but you don't have access to the lake. And it's better on the East Fork side, in my opinion, than the Muddy Creek side. Because the Muddy Creek side, we're trying to attract the non-power boats. And it's just power boat yeah. city over there. I mean, Rockville's got their ramp on the other side of the lake. And 
Party Co. is just south of there. So, so is this something you know? Maybe we can do it in phases. So you know, meaning that we do the restroom in phase two, and um, the first phase is just the concrete floor, uh, which would be the most expensive. But I think in terms of you know street lights, restroom, that's phase two, and that way you can kind of absorb some of the costs. Wait, is it then feasible to continue the trail under 66 and, and link up with the other side like we talked about before? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's that's more that I don't know that we're already looking at 1.5 minimum for that. Uh, I think at minimum, I don't know. Boat ramps, boat ramps are here. <laughs> they build them on the surface, and they're like that thick, and then they slide it into, it, it's pretty extensive, expensive process. Uh, and so if you add trails to that, I mean, again, that can phase it in. Well, maybe we can do the boat ramp as part of the scenic point phase yeah. altogether. And just maybe, what, yeah. what was that for scenic right now? Uh, what was the cost for the scenic point trail decision? Phase three. Or phase three? Yeah. Five. Five. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. No. Okay. But I think if you're going to weigh what's more important, if you're going to have scenic point park trail phase three or over and over and over Yeah. I mean, I like Scenic Point, but I look at that more as for the folks who live over there. Right. Right. I can have further over for them. I can't drive, so I have to have further over for them. That, but that was, twice. after the boat ramp is built, because that would come with parking, then that does add in, you know, maybe the um, 26 bond. You then have, you can justify extending the trail because now you have parking to the well, you'd have to expand the parking there, though, too. Well, again, if we build it with the parking there, the boat ramp is. Any other questions? Staff, I don't want to go I do have a question. I know you had mentioned that it is expensive to make our parks accessible. Do we have any plans for the future to make all of our parks accessible? We, we do, yes. Um, which is why you know, staffing has been an issue. Um, we're, we're trying to come up with smarter and, and safer ways to do business. Um, one of the things that we've done recently is contracted with a certified project inspection company who will come out and inspect everything and then provide us some insight and some planning for it. So, yes, and we would definitely keep that in mind with Herford and any new project that we have coming up. Yeah. I saw some uh, usage numbers. It's possible to try and do some kind of uh, mile of loss call it with the splitty eye binocular count where you're, when you're out there mowing and stick it up and you hit count and kind of start to track. All of them. So yes, you got obviously you know, wet zone. So we have wet zones easy. Um, I would tell you that we did buy trail counters, um, five of them to be exact, and all five of them were sold. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? What did you use the trail counter for? So <laughs> so so one to, to track. So one of the big things was is I wanted to know how many people were going in my kids' kingdom. So we put a trail counter literally hidden, hidden behind on the slats. Put an apple air tag in that thing. They stole there you go. We put it on a tree, so I went and knocked it down and they took it. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's being conspicuous about it, but also trying to put it up there. I mean, I'm trying to figure out what is something that would use a trail counter. <laughs> yeah. Because it looked like a, like a game camera or something? Not, not necessarily, no. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but it would have come in really handy. 
for us, you know, with trails and with usage on, on parks and you know, even trying to put it in some entrances to, you know, community or... Well, I would think parks would be like, we should look at it sometimes for trails. We are. That's, we currently are doing that right now. I did see the other day the assistant fire chief, um, assistant fire marshal was out when we got Earth Day out here with the drone, and he's doing photography with the drone. Then we go back later and say, okay, 250 people. Um, just one last item before um, we call it an evening. Any final logistics things for Saturday? They want to cover. Good question. Um, well, the best idea. Do you have an agenda? No. I would say the evening. Okay. Actually, I was a joke. I don't know if it wants to do that. I would send an email if there's a bus. We're getting on the bus. Yeah. But it's a, it's it's not no, a school it's like bus. No, it's a short bus. It has a wide bar. Good. Uh, like, uh, like, that's it. And a boulder. Anything else, folks? All right, let's call the night. It is uh, forty-seven. Oh yeah. Will that be sent out? Well, that be sent out.